Welcome back to our last quilt blog for our Ascot Quilt Along. This blog is called Combination Star. You're going to need two five and three quarter inch squares in background fabric and 20 two and a half inch squares in background fabric. In fabric A, you're going to need one four and a half inch square. In fabric B, you're going to need four four and a half inch squares. And in fabric C, you're going to need two five and three quarter inch squares. You can make your very own sampler quilt with the nine block Ascot quilt along pattern. Scan the QR code or visit the website today. Let's get quilting. We're going to start by making the quarter square triangles. And for this, you're going to need the five and three quarter inch squares. I'm going to start by drawing a diagonal line on the wrong side of the background fabrics. I'm going to start in the centre and I'm going to work my way to the corners. We're going to pin these right sides together with fabric C. And we're basically going to start by making half square triangles by sewing a quarter inch seam on either side of the drawn line. So we're going to remove the pins and then cut along the drawn line. Now we need to press these. So I'm going to set the seam and then I'm going to press towards the darker fabric. On two of these, we need to draw another line. So on the wrong side, we're going to draw a line, a diagonal line, that crosses over the stitch line. And then, with right sides together, we're going to butt the seams and we're going to lay fabric C on top of the background fabric and the background fabric on top of fabric C. So right sides together, butt the seams up and then pin in place. and then repeat with the other pair. Now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam 
on both sides of that drawn line. Now we're going to remove the pins and cut through that drawn line. Now we need to trim these to four and a half inches. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a standard ruler and then I'll show you how to do it with my favourite ruler. So for a standard ruler, we need to press the seams. So you can either press them open or you can press them to one side. I'm going to press them to one side. So with a standard ruler, you need to lay the diagonal line on top of one of the stitch lines and then you need to identify where that crossover point here needs to be on the ruler. So if you are going to cut to four and a half, the crossover needs to be at the halfway point. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So I need to make sure that the diagonal line remains on the seam and that two and a quarter mark on the ruler is at that centre point there. And when I've identified that, I'm going to cut up one side and along the top. I'm then going to rotate the unit round I'm going to lay the ruler in the exact same way. So the diagonal on the seam and then the two and a quarter point at that halfway point. So the two and a quarter on the ruler at that halfway point there. And it should be correct because the bottom and the left edges should be at four and a half. And then again, you trim up one side and along the top. So that's how you get a four and a half quarter square triangle trimmed on the standard ruler. So I like to use the quilt in a day six and a half inch triangle square up ruler. And for this, you leave your piece folded and you place the four and a half inch line on the ruler on your stitch line and then you place this um, vertical line on your other stitch line and that identifies the halfway mark and then you cut up one side and down the other side. So I'm going to continue with my other two pieces. And now I need to press those. So like I did before, I'm going to set the seams and press to one of the sides. And now I need to cut the dog ears off. Okay, so you have now made four quarter square triangles and we're going to put those to one side. Now we need to make the corner square units. 
So for this, you would need to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of your 20 two and a half inch squares in background fabric. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I've drawn a line on the back of one of those squares and I'm going to place that in the corner, sorry, right sides together. I'm going to place these right sides together in the corner of one of the four and a half inch squares. So this is the one that's going to go in the center of the block. So the diagonal line runs from here to here. I'm going to pop a pin in that. And I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew directly on the line. Now you can see that I've put onto my sewing machine the Seams Sew Easy Guide by Laurie Holt and it's produced by Riley Blake Designs. So this is a plastic template that you can put onto your sewing machine and it has three lines here. The middle line it runs directly between two diagonals and then either side of them are the quarter inch seam lines. So when I line my line that I've drawn on that it's running on this center line between these two diagonals and what you can do is rather than draw the line on you can just follow this line on the seam so easy guide. And it's a really useful thing to use when you've got uh, so many lines that you don't really want to draw, as in this case, where we have to draw 20 lines. So to save me drawing all those lines, I'm going to use this Seam So Easy template. What you need to do when you're using it is divert your eye away from the needle and down to this line here. So I'm going to go back to the cutting mat. So I'm now going to remove those pins and what will happen is this piece will flip over like this. So I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the drawn line and then this piece flips back. So I'm going to press that in place now. I'm going to set the seam and then press towards the small triangle. Now I can do the next one. And again, I'm not going to draw a line on this, but if you don't have the Seams So Easy Guide, draw a line on it. The line will run from here to here, and that's where you're going to sew. So I'm going to pop a pin in here, and I'm going to pop a pin in here. I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and draw and sew from here to here. So we're going to remove the pins and then we're going to trim. And then we're going to press. Then we're going to repeat in the other corner. The key thing to getting these accurate is to place this very nicely in the corner here.
there we go that is our first corner square unit to speed up the process making the other four i'm going to place the squares in opposite corners and sew them at the same time So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and chain piece them. those pins and then I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the drawn line. Sorry, I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the sewn line. Press these. So I'm going to set the seams and then press towards the small triangles. And now I'm going to pin the other squares in the remaining corners. Take this back over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to remove the pins and trim again. Now I'm going to press these. So I'm going to set the seams and press towards the small triangles. And now we're going to measure these. So they should measure four and a half inches. And if you're going to trim them, the thing that you have to be very mindful of is that you maintain your quarter inch seam allowance at all of these points. I'm pretty happy with that, it's a little bit wibbly on this side. Um, I find that using, or rather, I find not using the drawn line, but instead using the uh, Laurie Holt seams so easy guide, 
is more accurate um, only because sometimes you just no matter your no matter how hard you try you just can't always get that um, pencil in just the right place Ooh, that didn't uh, press very well I'll do that one again I generally find with these corner square units that I don't do too much um, trimming because I want to make sure that I've got that quarter inch seam allowance and although the seams may seem a bit wibbly uh, it all ends up in the seam allowance and you don't get to see it. Let me repress this one. Right, that's better. Now I'm going to lay it in the block layout. The key thing is now is to get these quarter square triangles in the right layout. I'm going to look at my sketch. Okay, so that's how it should be. So now I'm going to sew these together in columns. So I'm going to take those over to a sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm now going to sew the bottom units onto the columns. And when I sew these, I'm going to have this facing me so I can see the crossover point here. So I'm going to return these to block order. Now because I want to make sure that I match these points here, I'm going to press the seams open. So back into block layout. So I'm using the positioning pin technique. If you want to know how to get perfect points, then right mouse click on the link above and it will open up my video on this in a new tab for you. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And now we've got the last seam. I'm now going to press these seams open for a flatter finish. There we go, congratulations. You have completed the combination star block.
Thanks for watching and tune in next week when I'll show you how to put the sashing, cornerstone and borders on to complete your quilt top.